Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and one of my favorite things about running this channel is introducing you guys to new tools, be it new that just released, or new, maybe new to you, that have been kind of around for a while, but flew under everyone's radar. And that's exactly what we're looking at today. We're looking at Neo Barack. Neo Barack or Neo Baroque. I'm not exactly certain what they're going for with their spelling there, uh, but I'm gonna call it Neo Barack for the rest of this video. And this guy is a cross-platform, completely free 3D sculpting and modeling application. And you might ask, why would I need this? We've got blend well, this has a completely unique workflow, and it's very artist-oriented. If you like the workflow, you're going to love this application. Of course, you can also import and export OBJ files, so you can fit this into your uh, static mesh workflow however you want, into your game engine of choice or into something like Blender for finishing. Um, I'm also going to end this video off with a bit of advice slash a rant on how to not promote your product. So if you're trying to sell a game engine or a tool or even a game, uh, stay tuned at the very end for a little bit of feedback on part of what I think Neobrook is doing wrong. And it's a very, very easy thing to fix, but it's something that just drives me nuts. So stay tuned for that. But first off, let's get back to the good things. We're going to take a look at Neobrook itself or Neobrook. I'm going to switch back and forth because I really don't know. Um, this guy is again sculpting tool completely free cross-platform you can go over to neobrock.com i will toss that link down below and you can download it for any one of these three platforms in this case obviously i'm on windows you can see the installer here is 11 megabytes in size which is pretty awesome just head on over open up the or extract it out open the folder and then run the execute but you're going to want to make sure that you run it on your dedicated processor if you like me are on an optimus laptop it does not run that well on an intel machine uh, so here you see the default user interface one thing I'm gonna do right off the hop is turn off symmetry uh, so I'm gonna come in here in a brush and symmetry now I'm not gonna go into a whole lot of detail about how to use this guy there are actually guides and tutorials on the Neo Baroque website so um, you know again check that link out down below if this workflow looks good to you be sure to check that out so the simplest thing we can do here is you start by creating various different primitives so we can come in here and we can create a sphere to start for example and then just left click and drag and there we've created our sphere now where this gets kind of cool is we can start creating basically hierarchies or children within or on the surface so if I draw another sphere on this surface it's going to draw directly on top of it then if I do it again it's going to draw directly on top of that child now the cool thing is now I can come in here to the symmetry port of things so I come in here go symmetry and then we can turn symmetry on in various different ways but it's going to be localized symmetry in this particular case so if I say uh, rotation around the z-axis so I've got six items around the z-axis and I just come in here and there you see we've now zoomed in and down and we can use by the way you can uh, pan with the right mouse button orbit with right and left mouse button, and then zoom using the scroll wheel. But now if we come down here for one more surface, I can actually just go ahead one more time and we could create an array of objects on that object. Or we can go back up to the very top and do it again. So you can see how this could facilitate a very, very quick and rapid workflow. It's a, a completely unique way of doing things. Now on top of that, we've also got your traditional modeling tools in here, but they may not seem the traditional format. So for example, over here on this side of this guy, I can come down here and I can go into um, basically Boolean tools here. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna cut a sphere into the sphere. So like that, Actually, apparently I'm going to cut six spheres into the sphere because I did not turn symmetry off. But you see how those symmetry tools, how powerful they actually are. But now that I've got those, uh, apparently, six surfaces in my surface, like so, now what I could do is I could come down here into your more traditional tools, let's say normal, and I can normal extrude out as many of these shapes as I want. And click and so on. So you can see you, you can create shapes and, and um, kind of expressions that you wouldn't normally do this quickly in a traditional polygonal modeling system. And on top of that, we have other things like we have curves and profiles and lofts. So if you're down with doing things with a shape, I could do a profile curve like so, and then enter. And then we've created that shape. And then I can, of course, use these tools such as extrusion and extrude out, or I could do a scaled extrusion like that, very finicky. Now, one thing I have found is the undo is broken half the time for half the tools. Uh, that part's a little frustrating. Uh, that's the one major flaw I have found with this particular tool. Now, the cool thing is once you've gone ahead and created something that you like, such as say our, our weird shape down here, 
What we can do is come in here and then switch over to sculpting tools instead. So you see here, we just click this guy and then you've got your traditionals. The one thing, um, all right, so here we go. We're gonna go just do a deform. And this is sort of like, bleh, bleh. so you see that was ugly. Let me just start a new model. We'll start with just uh, a sphere like this, create one. Turn back to simple mode here, sphere, create. All right, so now here we can come into the sculpting tools. We can do a deform. Um, you can control the brush sizes here. So brush size up and down. You see the, the hot keys right there are um, the square braces, square brackets. So I can shrink our brush up and down in size. So we do a deform, your traditional kind of pull clay brush, like so. Now what is kind of annoying is that the select and the orbit are on the same thing. So when I'm not on this guy, I'm moving uh, or orbiting, I mean, which makes things a little bit confusing. But you see, you got your traditional sculpting tools. Uh, you can deflate, inflate, pinch. So I can do a, why is pinch not working the way I want it to? Um, uh, twist, like so and on and on. You've also up here, you come up here, you've got your various different options for your rendering that you would expect. Again, these are all toggles, so you can turn them off and on as you go. Uh, you can do contour, colored. Um, it, it's pretty sweet. You've also got a turntable. I'm not about the orbit, so it's not particularly useful in this particular case. But that is potentially, I ordered the floor, that is essentially how it works. So your modeling workflow is very different from what you're used to. And then there's a bunch of tools we're not even getting into here. So you got your mirroring tools, you've got uh, binary, you've got array tools, um, you've got, uh, this is, what is this guy again? Oh, I'm still in orbit. Uh, okay, let me turn that off. Uh, here, let me, new scene. All right, we're bugging out a bit. So there is the downside. Every once in a while, the UI does not do what you want it to do. Um, again, undo can break sometimes, and there I broke new again as well. <sighs> okay, so let's come in here. Go ahead and create our raw shape. Start with sphere again. Uh, fine, there's symmetry on. And then I come in here. We could sculpt that out to however we want it. And then once we've got a shape that we kind of like, Oh, so I broke it there. And there's not an easy heel brush, which is another thing that I find kind of irritating. But once you've got a shape that you kind of like the look of, uh, then you come in here to this guy and do a material on it. Pick your color that you want to paint with. So we go over with red. And then we come here, it's like, uh, so you could do your metalness, roughness, opacity, and thickness on the, that particular material. And then you just basically come in and paint. So then I come back here, we could switch out our material again. So we could go to a blue and paint. So obviously we can control the size of our brush as well and reduce that down. And yeah, that's kind of it. That, that is essentially the, the surface level introduction to Neo Barack. It is a very unique approach to modeling, sculpting, and painting. Your, your painting tools are somewhat limiting. You're, you're not gonna do full blown texturing here, but you can do some pretty impressive stuff uh, with very minimal effort. And that's the whole thing here. This is very, clay-like, artist-like, and the, the tooling itself lends yourself to creating some really interesting and bizarre and organic and fractal kind of creations with very, very limited effort. So it, it's a really cool tool. I have not really done it justice with my demonstration, but I do recommend you check it out. It is capable of quite a bit if you're willing to put up with the warts. Now, some of the question mark is, and the, probably the biggest question mark, and the one reason why I was kind of humming and hawing about updating this, and we're starting to get into my rant now, by the way, or my feedback or suggestion. Neobroke 1.13 is the last version you can download on the website. And I'm starting to wonder, is this project abandoned? So I go over here to the news section, and it brings us to a different site, a WordPress site, that was last updated on June the 2nd, 2016, which makes you think, huh, yeah, th this, this isn't being updated anymore. I mean, this is abandoned where? Why am I dealing with this guy anymore? This is probably a waste of my time. Well, that's actually not the case. If you come down here, or you go over here and go to Facebook, and here is where my rant comes in, Facebook 
you've got lots of updates, including details on the version, and I'm not gonna log in because Facebook is the devil, but you see here, there is additional information here. Oh God, I hate you, Facebook about updates, new features that are coming in 2.0, which is currently, uh, the, you know, the updated PBR release in Neo Baroque 2.0. Now see that 2.0 detail is huge. That's what lets me know, oh, this isn't an abandoned project. And it was only because I found this that I even bothered doing this video. Otherwise I was gonna look at it as, this is a dead end tool that had a whole lot of potential. But the truth of the matter is I come to your website and there's nothing here to tell me that you have anything ongoing. You have a news link here that is dead. You have a Twitter feed that has not been updated. You have taken and co-opted everything and all of your stuff is on Facebook alone. That is the biggest mistake from a marketing perspective you can ever, ever make. Now, especially even worse is if you lock this stuff away behind a login because I hate this user experience. The fact that I can't see the bottom 25% of the screen because I'm not logged in, that irritates the hell out of me, that I can't see your content at all. If I don't log in, I hate that even more. People hate Facebook. A lot of people hate Facebook. And the only reason why I have a Facebook account anymore is because of the occasional site or software like NeoBroke that does this idiocy and hides your news or updates behind Facebook. Now, don't get me wrong. I am not saying don't use Facebook as part of your marketing material. 100% do that. It is a way of reaching more customers. And if Facebook is your thing, stay on there. You can interact with your community. You can get more feedback. It makes sense. But do not make it your only point of contact. And even worse of a sin, do not have other features out here such as news or a Twitter feed that you abandon so that it makes everyone else think that your app is dead. So that is my biggest piece of advice for Neil Barak and for everybody else. If you do news on Facebook, also do it on your website and on your Twitter feed. A lot of us, and it's growing more and more every day, hate and refuse to use Facebook. And you are just missing a huge bit of the market because you're single sourcing. And the worst part is just take your Facebook post and copy it and paste it into a news post and you've accomplished the same thing. And people don't think your application is currently dead because this is an awesome application that so many people probably don't know about. And part of that comes down to marketing and the biggest error you've made is this this Facebook mistake. So that's my feedback to everybody out there. If you are single source marketing on Facebook, you're making a huge mistake. And if you are not updating your other sources and only updating on Facebook, you are making an even bigger mistake. So anyways, other than that negativity about how they're promoting things, and hopefully one of the developers have heard this and, the, and they realized that, yes, it makes it look like your product is abandoned. But other than that, this is a very, very, very cool tool with a very unique workflow that I highly recommend you check out, uh, it, even just to play around with for a little while. It costs nothing. Eventually, there's a 2.0 version in the works that hopefully will fix some of these usability bugs. But otherwise, it just it works great. It's got cool sculpting tools. It's got a very unique modeling workflow. The symmetry tools are some of the best that are out there. And it's just, it's, if this is your way of working, this tool could fit you like an absolute glove. So hopefully they start marketing it right. Let me know what you thought down below. Let me know what you think about Facebook as well. Not a whole rant of, oh, I hate Facebook, but do you think it's appropriate for people to do 100% of their marketing on Facebook? Or are you with me and you think that that is a huge mistake? I'm interested in knowing comments down below. And of course, have you used Neo Barack? I obviously didn't get into a whole lot of detail here. Is there a glaring thing that I missed? If so, share it with the rest of the people down below and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.